This one is going to be a bit on the different side, folks, as I won't really be guiding you through anything for once, but rather just showcasing what Winona's new toys could do for you. Now, I already know folk out there have certainly discovered the potential power of these things, but I do wish to explore the reasonable side of things, and that means limiting myself to just two generators and a complete set of catapults for both which I do believe is far more achievable for most out there. With them, we will put every single big bad that resides up above to test and discover some needed tactics along the way. So let's get to it. First on the hit list, Clopsy. As the white stuff falls, move into the position, but not too close to avoid him doing any area of effect damage to your machines. I found that kiting him in a straight line while moving solely up and down keeps him in the perfect range of all your catapults while still allowing for an easy kiting pattern for yourself. Of course, feel free to lend your mechanical turret companions a hand and Klaus will be closing his eye in a flash. But Klaus is just the first hurdle. What about the next? Well, the next hurdle may just be the most difficult, unfortunately. For you see, I love the claws fight for its layered mechanics and due to the movement involved, but all of that coupled with our new method equals swift disaster. Potentially, that is. For now, my biggest piece of advice is to just fight the fight as close to normal as you can even all the way up to and through his second phase, as there is just a mechanic we need to avoid desperately. So do your absolute best to keep him away from your turret placements for as long as possible. And if that means tanking hits to the face, you need to tank hits to the face. But when his health drops below a thousand or so, then get your turns involved for that final push. Just make sure your generators are powered before doing so, something that this bearded idiot forgot to do. But hey, the process remains as said. However, why is it that we need to avoid using our machines so much? Well, say you do use them from the get-go. Not only will Claus's fire attack burn them down without a flingo potentially, Claus also destroys structures if he walks over them. And that's not discounting just the normal damage he can do to them too. And oh yeah, you heard of Enraged Claus? Kill even one of his dear friends and Claus will hold a grudge so deep that he will destroy anything in his way. Literally. So bye bye generators, bye bye catapults, and very likely bye bye your life, as even if you try to keep his attention on you, that means taking enraged claws by yourself. So uh, yeah, good luck with that. So it's why I must go on record saying that Winona's catapults really shouldn't be used for this fight, unless other precautions are taken or you have a nice team to coordinate. But have fun either way. The Mooses of all gooses is next, and with her comes grand discoveries of the delicious cheese variety. Make note that not only will your catapults target and very likely kill the little demon spawns before Mama even shows, which I must say is some bad parenting right there, you can take advantage of odd skeletons and render Moose Goose completely worthless, for she won't be able to pass them, she can only target one thing anyway, and if you are that target, then your turrets near the wall will be totally fine, and you can still hit her to boot. And let's say you do smack her about a bit, she'll never fly again, and the best part of it all, the little ones are even powerless against the miniature wall of ancient bones, meaning no need to run away from the baby tornadoes. Soon? Everything will be dead, and the spoils are now yours to plunder. But come on now, let's not cheese our way to feathery victory. My advice here though is simple. Keep her aggro on you at all times, and try to keep everything in range of direct hits and splash damage. Again, Moose can only attack a single target at a time. And you may even come to find that some of the turrets will actually target the Moslings while you fight Mama, meaning even less for you to deal with 
wants Mama's Deadzo. Goose is already considered one of the easiest around, and these things just make her even more so. But just remember to make a lightning rod nearby just in case. Ant Lion is the next to bat, but I get the feeling that she won't even be making it to first base. For not only is she bloody immobile for Pete's sake, she is the easiest around, and Winona's catapults is gonna make it even more so. However, just make sure to place your turrets outside of her sand wall range or they will break instantly once the fight begins. That being said, the fight is very much the same regarding mechanics at play and you moving about to avoid the sand spikes, but our new toys makes things interesting. The damage from the turrets can actually destroy said sand spikes for you, making it far easier to navigate within an arena and not get overwhelmed by them, which usually just means free damage for her. But all this to say that Antlion, already the easiest boss in the game, is now more of a joke than ever. Hey Clay, our boss is going to get reworked too at some point because I think I know one who needs it. Badly. So you've made it through a seasonal cycle and the big fluff ball has come a-knocking. Well, first thing you need to know is that you must not let him get close to your turn emplacement or else it's bad news beard for you, especially if he goes about using his area of effect slam attack. So you need to make sure that you strike a balance between wanting to keep him within range of it all or keeping it all out of range of him. And you can do so by kiting him left to right instead of up and down like we did with Deerclops. That or keep him from moving far after each attempted swing. Whatever the case, soon the fuzzy giant will be tumbling down. Four dead, three to go. But before we get to how to properly ground the biggest firefly around, let me share with you knowledge unknown to me until this very first attempt here. Your catapults damage player-made structures, including walls. So if you wish to combat dragonfly using a method such as this, then you may be out of luck as the larva will escape. And I don't think I need to explain the potential disasters that lie there. But you may be thinking, then just move them out of range of the turrets, you numpty. Sure, but get too far away from the pools and arena, and Dragonfly is very likely to de-aggro easily. But the solution? Fossils once again. Now, you don't need to place fossils around every magma pool, but just the ones that could potentially be targeted by the catapults once stone starts flying. Like Goose and her Moslings, the larva will be incapable of passing through the fossilized wall, leaving you but to deal with D-Fly and D-Fly alone. But just remain aware of her enraging at any sudden time, as given the catapults want to target anything hostile to a player, they will target larva, thus killing them quicker than normal and altering the timing of a potential enrage. So, just make sure to have your trigger finger ready to use that pan flute. However, it is very likely you won't need to use it, as you will be dishing out enough damage to stun her over and over and over again throughout the fight. Eventually, the Mighty will fall, and you got yourself a ton of fuel for your generators. So well done. Her Majesty. The one most already believed to be tailor-made to die from these contraptions, and I agree. So it's why I won't show the majority of this fight, as it is incredibly easy with Winona's weapons of stony destruction. My only and biggest advice is to try and stay in the middle of your two sets of catapults as bee queens and, of course, her grumblebee minions. Biggest downfall is their attraction to being in close proximity to the player. So, use that to your advantage by constantly baiting them all into full range of each turret and be perfectly okay to handle the bee queen alone. Good luck, and make sure to have fun looking fabulous as always when the fight is done. But my favorite new thing about the new catapults, they actually work for the Shadow Pieces boss fights. And heck, 
They work extremely well to boot. The only issue is keeping it all in range, but a simple tweak to the layout you see here is going to completely nullify that. So just make sure the arena is larger than mine, with the placements on two separate sides, and then just keep the evil shadowy figures in the middle as much as possible. Otherwise, the fight is very much the same, and speed is still your friend, so please keep that in mind beforehand. Also, be aware of the level 3 Rook's size and teleporting mechanic. Don't spawn him too near your catapults, or you'll end up breaking your own backup for Pete's sake. Again, the setup mentioned earlier will completely negate that, so don't worry. But keep those feetsies moving, and your enemies in range, and even the shadows of all shadows will be vanquished by your mechanical know-how. That is every overworld big bad defeated. Well flippin' done. But there you have it everyone, a video showcasing just how viable what known as newest toys can potentially be if you choose to use them against the terrors of the world that is. I already know of way more uses beyond killing the big bads, so if you do wish for a video on some farming techniques, just let me know. But for now, just a reminder that the combination of fossils and these catapults is completely broken and that Winona isn't now completely useless any longer. So take care, folks, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.